Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and this is my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. I will have a link below the video to my blog post, which will have a link to the color challenge and all of the info and how it works and all that stuff is in that um, blog. So for this week's color challenge, I decided to use the My Favorite Things Prehistoric Fun stamp set and coordinating dies that I showed in my most recent haul video. And I pulled these out and I've done a quick tip video already showing how I line up all the coordinating stamps and dies so that I don't have to cut my dies apart using my little Misty. And I'm using the mini Misty for this one because it just happened to fit. And I lined up all the stamped images in their coordinating dies and then um, inked them up with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And I'm stamping them onto the smooth side of some Canson XL watercolor paper. So because these are brand new stamps, plus I'm stamping onto watercolor paper, um, they don't stamp completely perfectly the first time out, which is another reason why I love the Misty because I just ink them up a second time and I think even a third time because I missed like one small spot, but got them inked up and was able to stamp them right over top another time so that I got all these images perfectly stamped. And then this time I pulled out my neglected Gonsai Tambi watercolors. I haven't used these in a while. So I've been just, playing with all sorts of coloring mediums lately. My big one's been my Zig Clean Color Markers. I've been playing with my Copics again. I've just been hopping around doing all sorts of things. So today I was like, hmm, I should pull these out and play with them. So that's what I did. And I just used the, with this big, I have the big, this is a 36 set, whatever the biggest set is, of course. Um, inside the pack, inside the watercolors, there's like this clear plastic packaging. I've shown this before in videos. Um, it's meant to kind of keep the watercolors in place during shipping, but I've kept it and I just use it as my little palette. It just works. So I mixed up um, the four different colors for this color challenge, which is like a light blue, a celery green, um, orange, and purple. So I mixed up the colors I wanted, plus I mixed up a little bit of the black and the white from the palette to make a little bit of a gray. So mixed all that up first, and um, I'm using a silver size four brush for this and then cleaning my brush, and then I did messy watercolor. And I, again, have said this in many videos, but if you're new to my videos, I've been experimenting more and more lately with not being so perfect with my coloring, like not making sure that, you know, I touch all the lines and that it's perfectly filled in or heck, go outside the lines, that sort of thing. For someone like me who is fairly OCD, it has been a process to do that. I love it when I see other people that do it and it's, it on it does honestly take practice. So the more and more I do it, I'm getting more and more comfortable with doing that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, um, I basically paint clean water over each area and then I pick up the color of the watercolor I want to use and start adding that in. And with the clouds specifically, I started adding the color and then I would remove um, the moisture in the water from the brush and pick up some of that. So it was just a very light amount of that blue. I just wanted a hint of it. So they weren't just flat and boring, but I didn't want them like blue clouds. And I did the same thing with the top of the little mountains, just added that tiny little bit of blue and then kind of picked up more of it with um, basically a dry brush. And then for the little dinosaurs, since the color combo, normally I wouldn't color them this color, but since the color challenge had an orange and a purple, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do one dinosaur orange and I'm gonna do one purple. Probably not correct in the sense of what dinosaurs really looked like, but really who knows. So I just went with it. So I, again, really simple coloring, just with all the images, that's all I did was paint on clean water first, just to get the area wet and then dropped in the color and just kind of moved it around a bit and didn't worry too much about it being perfect. So once I had done all of that coloring and I had forgot to do the center of that one leaf and the bottoms of the trees, but I'll get to that in a minute, but got all the color on. And then once I was sure it was dry, I wanted to add something to the little spots of the dinosaurs. So. Like I said, the Gansai Tambi palette does come with a white watercolor, but I don't find it very opaque, like in the sense of showing up like really white. It does do an okay job, but it's nothing compared to my Copic Opaque White, which I've been using in I think every single video lately. <laughs> I get a lot of use of this, but you can also use like um, white acrylic craft paint works great too, but this stuff is amazing. And I didn't realize I was kind of off camera, but all I did was pick up a little bit of it with a smaller brush. I'm using a silver size two brush here. So I picked up a little bit out of my jar and put it on that same palette. And then I thinned it out just a little bit with water. So it was a little easier to work with. And then I just quickly went over the spot, the center of the spots on each of the dinosaur with that white, just to give it a little extra something. And again, wasn't doing it perfectly. It was a little bit messy. Some of it went over the lines and I was okay with that. 
So this is when I remembered I needed to um, finish the center of the leaf. So I just kind of mixed up another one of the greens that was just already like dried up on the palette. So I just re-wet it. And then I picked up a little bit of brown to finish the bottoms of the trees and that was good. So I'd set that aside to dry, which didn't take very long. It's been super hot here lately. So it honestly went quite quickly to dry. So once it was dry, I lined up um, that coordinating die set there over all those stamped images. And I'm just using some micropore tape, post-it tape would work as well too, but I just used micropore tape to hold everything in place. Even though I do use a magnetic plate as part of my sandwich, it's a magnetic plate, a cutting plate, the cardstock, dies, cutting plate. But I still like to tape um, my dies in place and also because my cutting plates are totally warped because I use them until you cannot use them anymore. So tape those in place so they didn't shift when I ran them through my machine there and then was able to die cut all the images in one pass. So then set those aside and then after I did that I was like I was starting to think about my layout and things like that. So this is when I pulled out the MFT Stitched Valley Dynamics and I got the same Canson XL uh, watercolor paper with those. And then I just quickly used that exact same green that I'd mixed up for all those images and just re-wet it again with my watercolor brush and quickly painted those um, in the same kind of slightly messy left, uh, you know, the edges kind of undone style and same thing let those dry and while those were drying I die cut some just some white cardstock with the largest die from the blueprints one dynamics and after I had die cut that cardstock I inked up the scattered surface background with um, very licious dye ink and then just rub my finger against the back I didn't press it perfectly I didn't want it perfect I actually wanted it even messier than this but I was like I was just going with it because when I have a few minutes to sit down and work on a card this was another one that took all morning and kind of into the afternoon just off and on you know I'll get five minutes here five minutes there I turn on the camera work a little bit go off and do something else deal with the kids etc etc that is how it works now so I just went with it and started then adhering the little scene I wanted to create so I popped up those um, stitched valley dynamics with foam tape and then attached each of those little dinosaurs. I put foam tape behind their heads and neck and then just my Tombow Monomalty on their bodies there to adhere them to those little hills. And then just started adhering all the little other elements from that stamp set that I had watercolored and die cut. I originally had no idea what I was gonna do, but I was like, oh, they're all done. You know, they're colored and die cut, so I'm gonna use them all. So I created my whole little scene with all those pieces. And then I die cut some black licorice cardstock with um, the smallest die from the fishtail flags layers stacks say that three times fast and die cut the cardstock first and then cover coated it with my anti-static powder and then I stamped one of the sentiments from the set with Simon Says clear embossing ink and then melted that with my heat tool and then I'm going to adhere that to my scene here with the same um, Tombow Mono Multi and once I've got that adhered into place, I can flip it over and cut off um, the piece that's hanging over the edge there with scissors. And then my card base, I decided rather than go, like lately, it seems like for months now, if not the last couple of years, I almost do 99% of my cards are white card bases. But this time I decided to do something a little different and pulled out my um, MFT Berrylicious cardstock, which matches the ink I was using. So I cut that to um, 11 inches by, or five and a half by eight and a half, and then scored at four and a quarter. So it's a top folding um, landscape A2 sized card. And then I used another sentiment from that set. So the outside says, I haven't seen you in ages. And then the inside says, I'll love you till we're fossils. This set is so cute. So this one I inked up with that same um, intense black ink that I used on the images. So I inked up the sentiment and made sure to stamp it just slightly lower on the inside of the card because I wanted to use those little um, leaf images and whatever that I had stamped and watercolored because they were sitting there. So <laughs> made sure to leave room for those and I adhered those to the inside of the card with the same mono multi adhesive and that finished off my card for today. So like I said I will have um, links to my blog post below the video in the description box that will have a link to the color challenge, there will be the pictures, there will be links to all the supplies used, all that info is in the description box below the video so check that out if you're interested and thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos and all the comments. I really really appreciate the support and I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye!